I'm going to go over the method of doing an overlapping seam in boiled wool. So with boiled wool, we have a right side and a wrong side. Um, and for me, the right side is the side where it's really felted. You can't really see a grain. And the wrong side, just very slightly, and I don't know if you can see that, but it very slightly looks more knitted because it is actually a knitted um, fabric that has then been felted to shrink it up. So it behaves kind of in between a knit and a woven fabric. So um, there are two methods of sewing seams for the Mallee jacket. You can sew the seams conventionally, right sides together, just as usual, and then press the seams open. Um, but you can also do this neat overlapping finish. And that is because um, the edges of boiled wool do not fray. Here's a scrap piece here. I'm just gonna show you, you know, I'm really going to town on that. And it won't fray or anything. So we can use this kind of finish. So the first thing we need to do is we need to determine which piece, which pattern piece is going on top. In the instructions, it will tell you at each step, which is the upper one. So for argument's sake today, we're going to say this piece is going on top of that piece, which means when it's finished, it will lay on top like that. And this is going to be the lower piece. So on the upper piece, I'm going to mark my stitching line and it is a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So um, you can mark that however you like. Um, you must use a tool like a marking tool that is very easily erasable. So this chalk, this um, for this fabric, this um, kind of waxy chalk works fine. Um, what I recommend in the instructions actually is a chalk wheel but I can't find mine right now. <laughs> so I've tested this uh, waxy chalk um, on this fabric and it erases fine with the iron, um, but uh, that's, that's okay. Okay, now on the other side, we need to mark a guideline. So the guideline is two times the stitching line. And why is that? That's because when, if we lay, if our stitching, if I marked a stitching line on here, which is also going to be that 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeters, and I laid it on top, it would cover it up and you wouldn't be able to see it. So I actually need to be, I actually need to lay it over twice that. So 10 eighths of an inch. So that is 3 centimeters. So I'm going to mark it on there. Kind of stuck in between metric and imperial in my mind which makes it hard sometimes um, okay so if it's around a curve that's okay just um, mark it as I was doing. So just measure the three centimeters, put your mark, do little like dots along and then um, blend them together. Just gonna turn it around. So this is the side, the lower side, and this is the upper piece. The lower piece and the upper piece. So I'm gonna take my upper piece, both right sides are facing up and I'm going to lay my piece on top just like that lining up that guideline so the guideline is the one that's further away from the edge and the stitching line is the one that is closer to the edge so one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch or three centimeters or ten eighths of an inch <laughs> so I'm going to lay that down and give it a pin
If you're feeling nervous about it, you can certainly hand baste it. Um, if it were me, I probably wouldn't hand baste it right on that line just because it could be hard to take that hand basting out um, if you sew over the top of it with this fabric. So I would probably just do it just to the left or the right. Okay, so you'll probably want to put more pins than usual just because it does shift around a bit. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to go and sew my seam now. I'm going to sew straight along that stitching line that I marked in before. So I've sewn that seam. You can see that's the guideline and that's the stitching line. You can see there are a few little inconsistencies and waves in there, that's okay. They'll press out really well just because of the um, natural properties of the boiled wool. Um, I'm gonna show you the wrong side now. It looks pretty similar on the wrong side. For the shoulder seam of the Mallee, it actually asks you to sew a second row of stitching to reinforce it. So here's my row of stitching here. If I needed to sew a second row of stitching to reinforce the shoulder seam, I would sew it a quarter inch or six millimeters, excuse me, towards this raw edge. So it's gonna look a little bit like a flat felled seam, but it's really not. Um, so I'm just gonna sew a second parallel row just here and that's to reinforce it because all of the weight of the garment is hanging off the shoulders and um, just want to make sure that it's not going to pop open on you so that's just for safe for safekeeping but I prefer the look of the single seam personally so um, that's why I haven't done it on the other seams um, if you want to keep it as a single seam you can go ahead that's fine too but um, anyway I recommend a double now uh, what you should go do is give it a press. When you press boiled wool, don't give too much pressure because it will crush the pile and you'll lose that really nice um, nubbly textural look. So just um, lots of steam and light dabbing kind of presses rather than heavy presses as you would for like a cotton or a linen. So I'm going to do that and then show you how I trim it up. Okay, I've pressed that. We're from the right side now. Um, the trickiest part of the seam finish, I think getting a clean finish is actually the trimming back. It's it's not hard, but um, you know, it's nice to avoid little like sawtooths or inconsistencies. Um, I would recommend using the sharpest tool you have. Um, I know some people use a rotary cutter, they kind of um, fold this back and use a rotary cutter, but I'm too scared to do that. So um, I don't have, I've never actually used duckbill scissors. Um, but I suppose those would probably be quite good. I'm going to just use my fabric shears here. Um, you could also use, if that makes you uncomfortable, you can use um, embroidery scissors. Use whatever you have, but I would just say use the sharpest tool you have. And this is the sharpest tool I have. So I'm just going to go under here. And the reason I like using these shears is because they have a nice long blade. And I'm just um, moving the blade up against that stitching line and trimming back. So I'm kind of, I suppose I'm using the thickness of the blade as my guide. Okay, so you can see I've trimmed that away. If there's a bit here, so see here, it's not quite trimmed enough. It's okay. I can go back and fix that. Um, let's show you a bit more. So if I get it right up into the blade, right up against the stitching line. There we go. That's not bad. So that's what it'll look like. Um, then I'm gonna flip it over to the wrong side now. Um, 
you can trim some of this away. You don't actually have to. There's nothing wrong with having that there. Um, I like to just trim a bit, not close, just, just to trim it back a bit so there's less bulk. Trimming about, I don't know, quarter inch. Okay, so that's the wrong side. So here you go. Here's the right side. And that's the overlapping seam finish.